Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0, and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do Road to Comic of the Year results show for group number two, and yes, introducing group number three, that's right fans, now if you're tuning in to Road to Comic of the Year for the first time, it is a video series where I have taken all my number one comic books uh, for the current year and put them in separate groupings. And I put them in these groupings so you, the viewers, can actually vote on what comics you want to be nominated for Comic of the Year. Once we put those comics together, we'll do one great grand vote. And there you'll have it. You'll have your comic of the year. So this is all based off of uh, your votes on the books that I have picked throughout the year. So I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who has participated so far. I've gotten many, many votes, great responses, and let's just keep up the pace. So here we go. Here is the results for number two. So first off, we had Shield number one. That's what's in group number two. We had Chrononauts, issue number two. We had Astonishing Ant-Man, issue number one. We had Invincible, issue 122. And last but not least, we had Batman and Robin, Eternal, issue number one. So those were the comics in group number two. So what did you guys vote? What was the favorite comic of the year? Well, I can absolutely tell you that... It was an astonishing Ant-Man, issue number one. This poor issue got one sole vote, and that was a good friend of mine by the name of Lisa. That's right, guys. And Miss Lisa, I am sorry there was no love for astonishing Ant-Man, but I love you. So, astonishing Ant-Man, sorry, maybe next year you'll get your series in the nominated for comic of the year. The next book that didn't get much love, which I enjoyed a lot, was Mark Millar's and Sean Murphy's Chrononauts, issue number two. Uh, this did not get very much love either, so sorry guys, you did not make it. So, it's between these three books, Wild Card, Winner, and Loser. Well, obviously, it's this book that's a loser. I mean, you can't. Shield number one, there's no freaking way that this book was going to get nominated for Comic of the Year. That was in there by pretty much default. So it all comes down to these two books right here. Which book gets the wild card? Which book gets the win and nominated for Comic of the Year? And that book goes to... No, it goes to Batman, Robin, in Eternal. Um, I don't think that this was much of a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, Batman, and Robin, Eternal uh, was a powerhouse that first week. Um, you know, honestly, Invincible did get a lot of votes here, but it couldn't stand the power of Batman and Robin Eternal. So Batman and Robin Eternal issue number one. Congratulations. You're the second book that gets nominated for comic of the year. And Invincible, everyone, still has a chance in the wild card round. So when the wild card round comes out, make sure you vote for Invincible. All right. All right. So here we go. We're moving on and we're going on to group number three. Uh, here's a new set of books, and uh, here we go. So the first book on group number three goes to Secret Wars, issue number one. This, at the time, had all the hopes and dreams of being the Marvel event of the century. And uh, this first issue was extremely action-packed. It had the incursion happening. It had Sue going off into some other world. The life rafts barely survived. And you were left with them just sitting there in battle world. The art was ex extremely awesome. And people loved this first issue. But when you compare issue 7 to issue number 1, it's night and day. And it doesn't even fall in the realm of Marvel Comics right now because we're all in already all new, all different. But when this one came out, I remember I enjoyed it. So if you want Secret Wars issue number 1, please vote now. The next book we're going to talk about is 
Batman and Robin, issue number 43. Uh, this book came out recently. If you remember, this was the whole issue where it dealt with uh, Bruce Wayne. This was the Bruce Wayne issue uh, where it dealt with Superman uh, coming to town and trying to maybe persuade Alfred to get uh, – Bruce Wayne to become Batman again and Alfred gave this whole story to uh, Clark and talking to Clark about how Bruce's brain is different and how he deserves to be the man that he should have been and it was a very touching story and at the end you get this crazy cliffhanger with Mr. Bloom uh, actually stabbing the penguin in the gut. Uh, so it was very interesting to see kind of what how freakish Mr. Bloom actually was. So this was a really good issue. This was the last awesome issue I thought of Batman for me at least. Uh, so if you want to see Batman 43 get nominated for Comic of the Year, please vote now. The next book we're talking about in Group 3 is the Little Mermaid, issue number four, Zenoscope Entertainment book. That's right, guys. Um, this book has the story of the Little Mermaid. Uh, but this cover is absolutely gorgeous. She is beautiful in this cover. And it's a story about Erica, who is a mermaid that actually gets captured. And she's doing – they're doing – they're conducting all these science experiments on her so they can create like super soldiers and things like that. The artwork is is beautiful in here, and the writer is Meredith Finch. Uh, and uh, when you read this series, it was awesome seeing this character uh, trying to escape out of the uh, laboratory, and you get to see the actual Atlanteans trying to rescue her at the same time, and themselves making their places visible on the land to try to rescue her. Uh, very gorgeous looking artwork. The characters come to life. The emotions are priceless. This is a great book and a great series, and this is something that was very underrated, I, I think, this year, and it deserves to be read. And so... Um, this is why it did get number one on my countdowns. And uh, if you guys did read this and you want to see this voted for, uh, nominated for Comic of the Year, please vote now. All right. Next, we go on to a, another independent book this week. And this time it goes to Manifest Destiny, uh, issue number eight. Teen. This is a book that deals with the Lewis and Clark adventures of them doing expeditions across the world and eliminating any potential threat that could come across America. But in this version of it, they come across all these supernatural creatures. And uh, in this book, they come across the battle of this bat-like creature that decapitates its host and puts people's heads so it can survive. Uh, but this book wasn't about the creature this time around. It was about the peep, the creatures that Lewis and Clark actually worked with here, which was these bird-like creatures. When you thought that they were actually allies uh, with Lewis and Clark, we found out that the our expeditionists wind up going out and killing these species of creatures when you thought that they were the good guys here. And for the first time, Lewis and Clark, you felt like they were a bunch of assholes in this series. And uh, when you get left with this crazy ending to this story arc, this was the story about this creature worked with this young boy who just got initiated into the crew and had to put down its partner, which was the other species. A very touching uh actual issue here and uh, I truly enjoyed it. Manifest Destiny is an independent comic from Image Comics and Skybound Entertainment that is worth every single read. This is a great book and uh, same thing. I don't know if enough people read it to get enough votes to get it to uh, nominated comic of the year but this was a great read and if you do want to vote for this, please vote for it now. All right. And last but not least, it's funny how we had Invincible Issue 122 on the cat on the uh, group number two, but on group number three we got Invincible 121. Uh, so once again, Invincible continues to be that series uh, that really impresses a lot of people. This again got into the wild card round. Uh, this is really how you know 
robot destroys Earth and how the Guardians of the Globe have to retaliate in this issue. Uh, it's just an awesome, awesome book. And again, Invincible, I can say hands down, is my second, probably my second, if not maybe my third favorite independent book out there. It's so close to Manifest Destiny and Walking Dead. It's just awesome. Robert Kirkman writes it. Again, it's just these guardians trying to recover with dealing with robot here. So really great stuff. And if you want to see this voted for or get nominated for comic of the year, please vote now. So guys, there you have it. There are the results for group number two. Uh, you have the books for group number three. So again, guys, vote. Every vote counts. And as always, guys, I always appreciate each and every vote that goes into this. Uh, this is a fun process for me. And, guys, until next week, this is Mike Spireslayer signing off. And, guys, if I don't talk to you or see you, have a great and safe and happy Thanksgiving. And don't go too crazy on that Black Friday shopping. So, guys, as always, thank you for watching. And this is Mike Spireslayer signing off. Take care, guys.